Hi, my name is Sunil, um, or Pai. My friends call me Pai. That's my surname too. It's a real name. Um, I. How do I even go to? Is there a ticker here? Okay then. All right. Um, all right, uh, so I work at Mintra. Uh, Mintra is India's biggest fashion e-commerce company, or so we like to claim. Uh, and we, I joined the company about a couple of years ago when we made a move from PHP to Node, Facebook, get with the program quickly. Uh, and I wrote about 2000, uh, and that was great, like we wrote a bunch of code, except earlier this year the company made the decision to go app only. Like we actually shut down the desktop website and the mobile website, we're app only. I wrote 2,000 words on the subject that there's a link to here, and it's very sentimental. I wouldn't even recommend you read it. But it has meant a lot of changes for me, for a 10-year career where I've been writing JavaScript. And it's not just me, and it's not just Mintra. This is the sort of thing that's now going to affect a lot of people. Anyway, so we'll talk about that in a second. But first, I want to talk about five big ideas, all right? Uh, the first one is the internet. Um, not just in e-commerce, but everywhere else, the entire deal with the internet is that there'll be one person who changes some data in one place and somebody else sees it across the world in another place, cool. But it's not just data and that is key to the internet, what a desktop app could have never done, which is that you're able to transmit entire user experiences over the wire as requested. And you can update this, you can push a change really quickly, you can fix it for them. And, and that's pretty cool, that is fundamentally different from anything else and this happened because the Internet was a social effort. The entire, all of humanity got together to speak HTTP and CSS and all that. So that's the first big idea. Uh, the second big idea, uh, I'm going to give you guys a 20 second uh, tutorial on web development. Most of you know all this already. So we'll start with a doc type. I will give Indian money to somebody who explains to me what a doc type does. Uh, you're not gonna. Uh, you'll make an HTML tag and you'll put a head tag and maybe a, this is how you learned web development, right? You made a style tag, you wrote a little string, then you made a div, you put an on-click handler over there, and maybe some inline styles, and it worked. And you made a little drop-down, and you were happy. And then your seniors come up to you and say, no, 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 that's not how you do it. This is not maintainable. You can't put inline styles, you can't do JavaScript inside, you need to put delegation, it's not performant, and whatnot. Which is fine, that's true. Except this is way more natural to program in, uh, and especially when you're trying to think it out. I don't really have to worry about state, like I just want to describe it, and then I'll get to the hard part later. Anyway, so that's idea number two. Uh, so yeah, that, that's the problem, that all your seniors will come up to you. Uh, idea number three, I've started counting with zero because I'm a programmer, I'm sorry. Uh, what do video games and servers have in common? Anyone, anyone knows this? Yeah, the idea is that the model for programming the system, the entire state system has very clear analogies. In a video game, you'd have uh, a scene object and there'd be two players at a position X, Y, and so on and so forth. And every 16 milliseconds, they're taking a frame and shoving it to the, sorry. Every si uh, just do this here. Okay, so every 16 milliseconds, they're taking a frame and shoving it to the TV, right? And it turns, and you'd think, oh my God, that can't be performant at all. No, that can't be true, but it works. It works because that's not what they're doing. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening in the middle that makes it performant. However, the mental model just requires you as a developer to keep that state in your head. This is exactly how servers work as well. We have been doing flux with servers for 20 years. Facebook didn't really invent it, right? You, Every time you click on a link or you submit a form, the server tries to compute your entire state based on your headers and session and whatnot, and then it renders out HTML. And then you do an action and it comes back. And it kind of sucks that we didn't do this for front-end development because we were doing it for video games, which is way fancier than what we do for our little REST apps. Anyway, so uh, the entire idea is to recreate the world, and we can only do this if you have an idempotent rendering screen, I suppose. Cool. Uh, next big idea is that state is not a place. This is how we did state forever. This is how I thought state would be done. Basically take an object, maintain a reference to it, and you make changes on it. You'd, do, you'd have setters and whatnot. And it doesn't even have to be this way, but this is a plain abstraction of how we've been doing state for a while. And it was OK. I mean, it worked, and it's fast, but it doesn't feel right, especially if you write a lot of them. Now it starts getting complicated. However, and I stole that line of code from Jeremy Morrill's Flux deck, which is easily the best deck on Flux I've read, highly recommended. 
but the idea is that you don't treat state as a place. You treat it as a value that changes over time. Uh, and it is purely a reduce over your array of actions at the time. And Dan did the best job of explaining that. I probably have to fix this now. Uh, but this is exactly how databases work. Everybody who works in databases knows that the real truth is in a log of actions behind it, and views and tables are just illusions really on top of it. Which is why like, the business guys now want access to your analytics logs instead of the database, because you have everything there. Anyway, but once you start modeling state like this, just like a database, a few things become true. You can now snapshot and rewind over data and this is to all you guys who are hacking on Redux tonight, right? Like this is basically what you're now going to try to do with your UI. You can treat it like an MP3 player, really. You can make playlists of states and keep hopping between them, see them replayed in real time. So, um, yeah, uh, so it gives you that. So, drumroll, dr dr dr, this is not really the conference for it. But React is all of these things. It gives you first class components, it gives you this bridge to basically convert those APIs to this. More specifically, not even React, and I hate that React Native is considered something built on React. I feel like it's something below. But the idea is that you should be able to have a mental model for these things, and that's pretty cool. And that has meant that as a developer and for people around me, that they worry really about the platform-specific parts like way later. They just get the app together and get the memory together. Am I, am I done? One, one quick. Uh, one more thing. Uh, React and React Native solved only the front end side of things. Okay, uh, I'll do it in 20 seconds. Okay, uh, however, I work in a company where we have a bunch of creative people who want to keep making layouts. Do you understand like no, uh, no mobile apps really have fonts? They want to be able to say make 50px, 50px do this, and they want to transmit this over the wire. And without HTML or CSS, you can't do this. So we have something called Cortex, and this is what it looks like. In fact, uh, um, it's basically JSON. It looks like serialized HTML. It's got type, props, children. We just save it on the database and we move. Uh, and I'll be open sourcing it sometime later this week. I wanted to end by saying I love you. This has now meant that I don't have to learn Objective-C and Java. I want to thank React Core and I want to thank the community. So thanks. <laughs>